Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm Furroy, greet you to another Gwent video. Today I will show you another Gwent deck and that is the Monsters Consume deck. As you can see I'm currently rank 19, I just started to grind recently again, I have not played Gwent the whole November but with the midwinter patch I thought it's time again to grind. So right now I have a very decent win rate, I guess I have won 70 games on the ladder, lost 10 or something like that, so very very high win rate, that's why I wanted to show you the deck today and Consume Monsters is kind of my favorite archetype despite that it was changed a lot with the midwinter update. So our new leader is the Arachas Queen. So instead of the Unseen Elder, you now have the Arachas Queen, which has more or less the same effect. You consume three allies and boost self by their power. But now also, also has immune. Immune means that you cannot be targeted by cards like Alto Sunder and so, but you can still be um, getting crushed by a Scorch because that is not a target card, but that's just um, an overall damage card for the whole board. So it can still kill the Queen. Uh, consume as a as a deck type is just that you kind of destroy your own units and you will then get the points of this unit to another unit and you will then try to um, keep points for the later rounds or you try to get some extra additional effects or bonus effects through the consume archetype. Uh, as I said, the deck type was changed quite heavily and the reason for that is that some of the death wish or maybe all of the death wish cards are not uh, keeping the points over for the next round. So um, you might remember this little card here, the Nika. So the effect still kind of seems the same, but now the Death Wish will not trigger for the next round. So if you have a Nika on the board and you are passing, you're ending the round, then the Nika is not coming back for the next round. Instead, it's just going to the graveyard and boom, Nika is out. If you, on the other hand, kill the Nika in your own round and you haven't passed so far, you're still spawning a Nika. So the Death Wish is triggering in a round, but it's not happening between the rounds. So that means the Nekas are kind of weaker. That's why oh, they are getting buffed by by one point. So it was before three points, now it's four points. So a slight buff in points, but overall the Death Wish as it was before, as it used to be, was of course stronger. The same goes also for the, the Harpy eggs here that are getting spawned by Thelenia Harpy. These are also not triggering anymore between the rounds, so you're also losing those one points. That's why the Harpy is now also six instead of, it was four, I guess, before. Might be five, I'm not totally sure. So uh, the rest of the deck is um, kind of interesting. So I have a lot of success with it. Uh, that's why I wanted to show it with you. And I have the Regis Higher Vampire here as a consume card. So we can look at the top three or three bonus units from your opponent's deck. Consume one, then boost itself by its base power which is cool if your opponent is running a lot of um, strong creatures. So that is really triggering good. We have a Chiron here, consume a unit with six power or less and boost self by its power. Normally what you're trying to do is boosting a unit or consuming a unit from your opponent's side. You do not want to consume your own cards normally because it's definitely more powerful if you consume an opponent's unit. That would be six points that he's losing. You're getting six points kind of because you're consuming the unit and you still have the Chiron. So that's a nice swing card then. With the Caretaker, you can resurrect the Bronze Silver unit from your opponent's graveyard. That makes sense uh, if he has some strong silver cards in the, in the graveyard, of course. And good old Muzzle here. Charm, a Bronze or Silver enemy with 8 power less. That is never bad, so totally good to play it. Uh, from the new cards, I do not have too many, to be honest. As you can see here, that's uh, kind of all the old cards. But some have new effects, so the Algol is definitely a new card. That is a consumer Bronx or Silver unit from either Graveyard Boots by its power, which is kind of like the old Katakan. So it's just coming back into the, into the game by a different name, different artwork, but the effect is already well known, so nothing unusual here. It's very powerful or can be very powerful. Um, plus you can also make sure that your opponent is not able to resurrect a specific card, a specific key card that he normally wants to resurrect. I also um, decided to play the Dorogary here, which is create any Bronx or Silver Beast or Dragonoid. So create is um, is a hot topic right now in the community. So create is a random kind of, so you will get then three cards. So three Bronx or Silver Beast or Dragonoids, and you can choose one. There is some strong stuff in between, that's why I have included it. Plus it allows you to kind of, if you high roll, pretty, pretty decent. There is some some stuff in there that you want to play and it's one extra point kind of. So you get a one point silver unit on the board. Plus you can create another silver unit, which is then worth normally more than the, the normal point of a silver unit. So if you're not getting unlucky, which can happen, of course. Um, the rest, I would say, is also similar to before. Uh, what? Yeah, we have the Barbagasi now. 
instead of the Ekimawa, which is still the same unit. It's just a new name, a new artwork. So instead of the Ekimara, you now have the Barbagasi in the deck. You consume an ally, boost self by its power, and you have Resilient. So totally the same card. What you could include into the deck is uh, the following card here that I have, I have tested with it, but I uh, haven't played too much right now. Uh, I think the card is worth it, but not as good as a Barbagasi. So you can consume two allies and boost self by the power with the Forktail here, which is a new card included in the Midwinter Update patch. Uh, and if you play that, you kind of want to play the deck a bit differently. So what I'm trying to achieve with my deck right now is to have the Resilient on the board and then keep the points for the next round. So if you play the Barbagasi on one, one or round one, then you want to get the points, of course, for round two. You can play it also on round two and then get the points for round three. So that's pretty cool. The Forktail is a bit of a different play because with the Forktail, you will then try to um, buff the Nakers kinda to make them bigger because you can consume two allies and not only one with the Barbagasi. So then in the end, the Naker has a bit more power on the board. And by the way, speaking about the Nakers, so because you're not Keeping the Nakers between the rounds, the Death Witch is not triggering anymore. Uh, you are normally not trying to get the Nakers out with the Slyzard. So you can then, for example, consume a Naker with the Toad Prince here when you already have a powerful Naker in your hand. So let's assume the Toad Prince is consuming the Naker for, let's say, 10 points. So the Toad Prince will then be 16 points. You have a Naker in the graveyard. And then if you use the Slyzard, you consume a Bronze or Silver unit from your graveyard, then play a copy of it from your deck. So you can then, for example, consume the Naker that is in your graveyard. And then another Naker from your deck is spawning and uh, they will be relatively big later in the in the game. So if you normally spawn a Naker on round two, it will be probably 12 points. And in round three, it is then normally between 15 and 17, 18 points, which is quite a lot. It's a powerful blow for your opponent. Comes as a little surprise if he's not counting how high the Naker is already going so that's normally your winning card for the last round so you totally should at least have one slizer or at least one Nika for round three to win that round because it's so so many points that you will drop on the board to show you now how well the deck is performing on the ladder i have recorded a game that i made earlier so i hope you will enjoy it if you still have questions left please do not hesitate to use the comment section and also i would be very grateful for a like on this video much much appreciated guys also you can subscribe of course to my channel do not forget that and now let's go see some gameplay here we go all right guys so our opponent is also playing diorahas creed so we are also facing a consumed deck let's see how the mulligan is looking we have um, a harpy here that's definitely a unit that you want to mulligan so let's do that right away we have a nika one Kalani harpy and double slice heart plus the Rograi, a toad prince and the chiron uh, I think for the start it's fine to drop one slice out. We get Algul. That could be fun. And the rest should be fine. So let's just keep the hand here. And do not do the last mulligan. And we will start here, unfortunately. So going to start with the Harpy. And the Toad Prince, you will play that after at least a few of the Harpies out of your deck have spawned. Because if you're not doing that, well, then you will just... Oh, interesting. Good land spirit. Uh, then you might just draw a Harpy and that is spawning on the board anyway. So why should you play that first? Mm, with that on the board, let's just go for the um, Araha screen then. We are then eating all three units. So we will then spawn the small Harpy on the board. And the Araha screen is getting buffed quite heavily. Normally this is the only the only weather effect he has in his deck. So that is the only weather effect we, we need to be careful for. Uh, it's currently 15 points ahead, but of course that's just because we played our big, big leader. He's also going to the Rahas Queen, eating the small wolf. And with that, he's spawning three Harpies out of his deck. At least he showed that there you go, all spawning in the front row. So six points behind. He will now eat uh, the two points here. Spawning another Harpy then. Can come in the middle row. Room for Slyzard. And we will then spawn another Harpy on the board. Because we still have the Barragasi here, so we want to eat some more eggs. We want to get the extra effect. This one sucks at the moment. So nothing to counter that. Then how about we will go for the Dora Grey. We will get another Slyzard. We get the Vivan here that's dealing 5 damage. And the Harpy. 
So the slide out right now is not really finding a good target. So I think we're going for the Vivan. And we will then hit. Well, if we hit the Harpy Egg, he is not getting the extra boost. But we would not deal 5 damage, though. I think we're just hitting the Warrior. We'll deal 5 damage on the Warrior. Currently 8 ahead, but we also have one less card to go. But he might not necessarily play with the Resilient Unit, so... If we just have the Barbagasi on the board, that are then coming for the next turn, we might just lose the first round. That's totally okay. Another warrior. Kill the bot. So he was not finding anything for this warrior. That means that the Chiron is easily, easily eating it. So you are not consuming more here, but we are. So it makes us plus of 18 points. He was looking forward to consume a lot this round to make the Nikas that he probably is also playing a lot bigger, but he's already passing, so we are down by one card. We are winning this round, but we are also keeping the Barbagasi on the board. So that means potentially our opponent needs to play at least one more card than we are. But we also got a lot of Barbagasis here. Interesting. We can still draw more cards, so we might make the round a bit longer. Finish here and then spawn some more Babagassis on the board. How about that? How about the Toad Prince will draw us another card? That is a Caretaker. Uh, interesting. We're then consuming the Nika, so getting 10 points on the Toad Prince. With a Caretaker, right now, we can, for example, pick another Harpy here. We could pick a Van Warrior. If we really want, I don't think we want to be honest. So he's spawning a harpy. We are now using the Barbagasi. Eat the other Barbagasi. So we are then keeping six for the next round. That will be another warrior spawning, isn't it? There you go. Warrior spawning again. We will then also play. Oh, let's see, let's see. Um so do we want... We can pick up the Harpy as well. Okay, Caretaker is picking up the Harpy. And then we will play one Babagasi and with the Monster's Nest we can um, get create another Babagasi. So we have two eggs, two Babagasis to go. That sounds alright. So let's do it. Eating the first egg. is spawning a Naker now for 12 points. So we will now use the Monster's Nest. I'm going for the Babagasi. There you go. We eat the last egg that we have on the board. So we are at 64. So 65, 30 points ahead. He's now eating, or next one he's eating the Naker. Which means uh, he's spawning that. And if he just pass now, he can also pass because unfortunately... He is spawning then another Nika on the board, so he would have a card advantage of 1. But we are keeping 18 points in total for the next turn. So for the next round, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, he just needs one slice out and then get the Nika on the board as well. Uh, we're still passing, of course. So eating that Nika, there you go. Spawning another one on the board. We are passing, we are now down by 9 points. Our opponent is therefore winning the round. Plus he has a card advantage of one. He needs to start then. Higher Vampire and the Slizard. We have right now still a Nika on the deck. So the Slizard is definitely good. I think we're just keeping that. The, uh, the Ghoul should also be okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Okay, there's a Harpy. How about we are using the Higher Vampire? There's 13 points from the Nika. Yeah, I like that a lot. So we are eating that away. Currently 20 points ahead. But he also has one more card to play. And you can expect that at least one Nika respawning here in the last round. There's Gales. And so far he's only played the Woodland Spirit. There's a renew apparently. So the Woodland Spirit is coming. And well, well, well. So 
we will now go for the Argul. The biggest card will be the 9 here from the Nika Warrior, so that's our target. Getting 9 on the Algul. Really 19 points still ahead. He's dealing 2 every turn because of the fog. And next turn a slice out into the Nika, which was getting buffed a lot. We have consumed quite a few units, so that might be good enough. It depends really on how many Nikas he can spawn here. So far he only played one slicer, there is another slicer, so he is getting rid of the Nika. Oh he's not, he's picking the warrior, interesting. So he's hoping to consume, so maybe the last one is also a slicer. If the last one is also a slicer, that will be very close. He might be ahead by that. Let's find out. So getting the Nika on the board, let's see how big that is. 17 points. So we're 23 ahead. He will consume the egg. Oh, he's not. Wow, okay, so we are winning the round and the game. So he could have picked with the slides that he had just the Nika. Maybe that was more points. Anyway, we're winning the game.